We change every time. We change garments. <laughs> Amen. We change. We get refreshed. We become renewed. All the garbage that was bothering you gets melted away. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter four. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Second Timothy, Chapter Four, starting at verse one. Everybody there? Cool. Let's speak it. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and with teaching. Now, there's something important here because one of the things he's saying is be ready. Be ready in season and out of season. In that, there's something vitally important that you and I, through the Spirit of God, that positions us to see things through. He tells us the next move. It's our responsibility to receive what God is telling us what the next move is. What is the next move of him and what is the next move of your enemy? And if you don't, first of all, know the next move of your enemy, you won't make the next move of God. So we're in a time of next move. Amen? Preach the word. In other words, release it. Preach means to what? Speak. Release it. Be ready. In season and out of season. What is a season? It's associated with harvest. Harvest. See, the harvest is constant. It's not just season anymore. We are in a constant harvest now. The next move of your enemy, <laughs> we must know. Again, if you don't know the next move of your enemy, you will not be able to partake in the next move of God. You'll miss it. Everybody okay? Remember, God's moves are focused on harvest. And how does he do that? By awakening. Because his desire is to advance the gospel and his kingdom. We are still right now in the first awakening, but there's going to be another awakening. After the elections, there'll be another awakening. Boy, people are going to wake up then. Let me share something that with you. Because we're still in the first awakening, but we're in the second, first and second whirlwind. Okay, remember the first whirlwind is to tear back and expose. The second whirlwind is to drop provision and strategy to his people. That means more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Why? So you know the next moves. To be positioned is the basic principle for me and you to have and maintain victory. One of the things the enemy tries to do is get you out of position. How? Emotionally. Amen. He lies to you. Every, you know, people get out of position very easily because they still rely on their feelings. They're still emotional de decision makers. God can never trust an emotional decision maker. Never. To me, that's backsliding. When a person backslides, they got to start over again. What? Well, to earn God's trust. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. This sound doctrine is also associated with the voice of God. But according to their own desires, their own emotional desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to what? Fables, lies, deception. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions, endure attacks. Do the work of an evangelist and fulfill your ministry, your call, and your purpose, and your destiny. Again, we must always know next move. Next move. You will not know next move without a prayer life. It all starts in prayer. And you won't know the next move without the presence of God in your life. It's impossible. In Hebrews chapter 12. Right now, we are, it is vital times to know next moves. And it doesn't mean it's going to come to you in a blueprint that you're going to know everything. Hello? You can sense things in the atmosphere. You can sense things by the presence. You can sense things by the Holy Spirit empowering, uh, impressing you with certain things. He'll, he'll let you know through dreams or visions or revelations. Next move. Remember, the one thing he's always preparing you first is to know the next move of your enemy. Why? So you don't bite the bait. Verse 25. Hebrews 12, 25. It says, See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but the what? Heavens. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as the things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. This is where you do a self-examination. What's shaking you? Hopefully the Holy Ghost. That's the only shaking we want. Shaken and a quaking. Yeah. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, hello, a kingdom that cannot be shaken, we are supposed to be a citizen of a kingdom that can't be shaken. Amen? Again, the only thing we should be shaken on is the presence of God. Hallelujah. It's Holy Ghost shuffle. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have what? Grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Remember, for every shaken, there's awaken. When the shaken comes, awaken comes. Amen. God speaks by his shakening. He speaks by his what? Shaking him. When he shakes things up, how many old chaos is shaking him? You know, storms are shaking him. Trials and tribulations are part of shaking him. All of these things are to awaken. Awaken. We are in the greatest awakenings that there has been in years. I mean, it's constant. Why? Because the harvest is constant too. There's not only a shaking globally, Naturally, nationally, but personally. Amen? All of this is to get into position and ability to escape the enemy's traps. In Joel chapter 2. Oh, hallelujah. Next move. You must see things ahead. You must anticipate any move that your opponent's going to make. And be ready to respond, not react. Hello. 
To do what? Respond, not what? React. React always gets a person out of position. So in a chess game, for those that don't, that don't play chess, think of checkers. And if you don't play checkers, think of anything else. Any kind of a sport game or a competition, you must always know the strategy of your opponent. Anticipate what the next move is. Amen? Why? So you can respond accordingly. Listen, there's people you're going to be around that you better know what's up here in them. Hello? Not that we're mind readers, but we're fruit readers. We, every one of us is a fruit inspector. And we check fruit. You'll know whether a person's responding or reacting. Amen? So you're to anticipate in that arena. You should know the next move of that person. You know what triggers a person and what doesn't. Amen? That's why people get offended and all the other stupid stuff. First of all, they don't know their own next move themselves. Hallelujah. Joel 2, verse 28. Let's speak it. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will what? Pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy. Well, let me tell you something, that prophecy is a part of the next move. Because you are actually prophesying. When you're seeing things through, hello, you're seeing things spiritually, prophetically. You're, a, you're, you're sensing and interpreting the correct next move. What is the next move? Most of the time, let me, let me, you know what your enemy's next move is. You know what you're battling with. Your struggle, hello, it's a part of the enemy's next move. But so many people ignore it. What are you struggling with? Oh, nothing. I got it. Yeah, right. You got it already. You're going to get it. Why? Because you're going to miss the unction of the enemy's next move. See, he even gives you an unction. But people miss it because they're too caught up in themselves. When you're in a carnal state of being, you ain't getting nothing of the next move. You're just going to step into it in every trap and snare that there is. Hello. <laughs> and he will pour out a spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So you're going to have to be in the spirit to see the next move. Amen. By his spirit is released the next move. Does everybody get it? It's important. That's why it's important for me and you to get fellowship and gather together and not forsake assembly. Why? Because the more you're connected, the closer you are, the more sensitive you are. In Ezekiel 36. You know, it's, it's, it's like the same thing in the area where the first time you've gone to, you, first time you go to a place or something, or first time you go to uh, meet someone or whatever, you know, even at a job or whatever. Man, you're, 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 your antennas are up everywhere. You know, you're like, you're, you're checking things out. What are you checking things out for? Because you want to stay protected. Does everybody get it? <laughs> Unfortunately, some people need to protect themselves from themselves. They're their worst enemy. So in this is, even if, you're, even if you go drive somewhere and you're in unfamiliar territory, amen, you must be sensitive enough to see the next move. Because you're in an unfamiliar area, you've got to be looking out everywhere and anticipate what's the possibility, what can happen. Amen? And, and even when people sit down and, and discuss things or whatever, listen, 
it, people can get in arguments and, 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 and battle, especially over doctrine. Oh, my goodness. Especially a Democrat. Hello? You mentioned Jesus, they freak. You mentioned Trump, they pass out. But you can revive them. They do nothing but react. Amen? <laughs> you want to see a Democrat react? Just mention Trump. <clears throat> Tell them the truth. They really freak out. But in this, we've got to anticipate, especially when you have family gatherings. Hello? And you're a believer and they ain't. Oh, man. And they're all promoting abortion, free rights, free this, free that. Man, you better be careful. But again, before you go there, you should have anticipated that. You should see the next move. Now, you'll know whether to go deeper in the conversation if you can see the next move. You know, because the enemy tries to suck you in. So there's two things we cannot do is go there. Don't go into the trap. You must be able to discern these things ahead of time. Amen? <laughs> Glory. Ezekiel 36, verse 23. Let's speak it. And I will sanctify my what? Is everybody, everybody there? My great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. When I am what? When I am howled. In you before them, hallowed in you before them. That means Christ's character is expressed. In other words, we're not reacting, we're what? Responding. And then I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. That means yourself. And I'll give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit, my spirit, my anointed spirit in you. And he will cause you to walk in my statutes if you cooperate with him. Amen. And you will keep my judgments and you're going to what? Do them. So you're going to follow. He's going to release the next move of everything in your life. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine on you. In other words, prosperity will come. Is everybody all right? We'll get a new heart, new spirit, his spirit, to make way of escape <laughs> and reposition us so that we can anticipate the next move. Not only the next move of your any, but the next move of God. And 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Glory to God. You know, even in, in like in football games or whatever, the coach is always anticipating the next move of the other team. So before he sends out a play for them to do, he anticipates already what the next move. What's he, and some of the things that he's doing, he's trying to get them in a position purposely so that he can do something to score a point. Amen? See, the enemy likes to get us out of position so he can score a point. So we must be careful in all these areas. That's why it's so important to be in prayer. You know, if you are a person of prayer, you will receive information. It's called inside information. Amen? Inside your closet. <laughs> First Corinthians 2, verse 9. Did I say 1 Corinthians? Well, good. I think I'll go there then. Let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? Spirit, his Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the what? Deep things of God. 
For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of, a God, of God except for who? The spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might what? That we might what? Know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, nor uh, the Spirit of God, for they are what? Foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. So we will need spiritual discernment. Amen. Amen. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. So you are judging these things and determining the next move. But if you're not in the spirit, it's not going to be easy. You're too busy, caught up in yourself. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. By his spirit, we are spiritually discerning the next move of the enemy and the next move of God. Why? So you and I can be in position. Right now, I can tell you in my own personal life, in my own personal life and, and, and associated with everything that God has given me in ministry and everything else, I, I'm already foreseeing many things. And I am preparing for them right now. Why? Because I'm foreseeing the next move of God and preparing for the next move of the enemy. Does everybody understand? And that's how we should be. Not only personal, but family and everything around us. Psalm 40, 140, Psalm 140. You know, it, it, and don't get me wrong in this because we're not giving the enemy glory, amen, at all. But we must anticipate his next move. And if you don't, you'll step on a trap. Psalm 140, let's speak it together. Powerful prayer. What does it say? Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They sharpen their tongues like a serpent. The poison of ass is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from what? The violent men who have purpose to make my steps what? Stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me and cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. One of the things that you can tell by, especially in the enemy's traps, when you go on the Internet, I mean, there are some strange stuff that just pop up, you know, everywhere. Those are traps. You look at it long enough. You, if a person looks at it long enough that's not supposed to be looking at what he's supposed to put up there, that person's going to click on it. And that person has just been taken. You know, look at all the advertisements. Let me tell you, the enemy owns an advertisement company. It's called Google. That's why they can't speak correctly. It's called Google. Anyways. And so all of this technology with Google, they, they promote more evil then they do righteous. And they remove the righteous from it so they can snare people. Man, they know everything about you. They know what you like. They know what you're going to buy. They already have the next move on you. Does everybody get it? They know. <laughs> Same thing in your phones. They're attached to all of this stuff too. So the enemy is going to come and promote, impress something for you to participate into the next move of the enemy that's coming against you. 
You must know that. You must be, pre be prepared for that. Amen? Even when you go into the stores or whatever, especially if you're hungry and you go food shopping. Man, that's dumb. Don't go food shopping when you're hungry. <laughs> Everything looks good. <laughs> Verse 6. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, and do not further his wicked scheme, let, lest they what? Be exalted. <laughs> I mean, th this here was the, the starting factor to overcome was prayer. This is what his prayer was. When you begin to slack in prayer, the enemy knows. You skip two days, everybody else knows. Amen? Psalm 124. Psalm 124. Speak it from the beginning. Is everybody there? If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let men, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has, what, escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have, what, escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Escape. God is always preparing. Listen, if you don't know the next move, then you ain't going to escape. Amen. You get snared. Then you got to go through all kinds of stuff to break off all of the stuff to escape. Amen. Why well, have to do everything over and over and over again? Praise God. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Again, so we, you and I, will see another awakening. That means that there's going to be more shakening. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-one. How many of y'all know God is always making a way of escape? Amen. The problem is, is that people don't receive it because they've never taken the time to see the next move. Verse 21, let's speak it. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Well, listen, if you're not, if you're not in a place of maintaining clean, cleanliness, amen, and I mean talking of sin, coming out from among them and separated, sanctification, that's what he's talking about, maintaining a place of sanctification, you won't be sensitive to these things. Amen? <clears throat> Verse 22. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So make sure your associations are people that are calling out with a pure heart. Amen? Amen? A person that does not have a pure heart cannot be honest with themselves. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all. I said gentle to all. Able to teach. Patient in humility. Correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. And that they may come to their what? Senses and escape the snare 
of the devil that they stepped in the trap on because they didn't see the next move and they haven't been taken captive by him to do his will. Amen? So again, people are not seeing the next move of their enemy. They're not sensing that. And it's vitally important because if you miss that, you're going to miss the next move of God or you're going to miss a way of escape. We must be clean to escape. Again, the blood cleanses us, so that's why he said, talks about granting repentance. Taking captive, most people are taken captive by indoctrination or doctrines of demons, amen, and the voice of the stranger. To attempt to free themselves, they cannot. But many people are not all willing to accept the escape. Because, again, they cannot discern the next move. But God is always willing to grant us a way of escape. So many times people don't see. They try to open a door to God's shut already. And they don't discern that. Why would you try to go open something that God has already shut? In fact, the Bible says that if you start building on the things that the Lord has destroyed in your past, it's called an abomination. See, people are still fighting for their lives instead of the life of Christ. They're fighting still for what they want instead of what Christ wants. It's still going on. Listen, your battle is constant in this every day, no matter where you go. Your choices, decisions, and even purchases. You must see it through. Amen? The next move. Hallelujah. Matthew 24. Glory. Matthew 24, verse 4. Jesus answered and said to him, Take heed that no one does what? Deceives you. So if you know the next move, is it easy to be deceived? No. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. And there are loads of them right now. I don't know if you, well, uh, over in, uh, what's it, Lebanon, where the, um, that uh, port was destroyed. They just saw millions of fish just came up all along the shores, millions. And that's a part of their industry, too. You know, millions of fish. They're all dead. They're not alive. Things are happening all over the globe. I don't know if you've seen how many meteors have come through the atmosphere and exploded in the air. Many. All of these are the signs and wonders in the heavenlies now. There was just another one, a huge one, huge explosion right in the atmosphere. They're all over. But see, people are not paying attention to these things. They're too caught up in life, their own. And it says, he says, in all these that are the beginning of sorrows, then they will deliver you up to tribulation, and they will attempt to kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound and the love of many will grow cold. Let me tell you, that is where you've got to be careful from. Because the influence of the enemy and the atmosphere is pounding everyone strongly right now. Irritation is in the air. I'm going to tell you right now. And you can't spray it out. And it's not a, you know, I mean, it's infected, you know. <laughs> but you, no disinfectant is good. You've got to maintain the presence of God to keep it out of there. Amen. <laughs> 
It says the many will be offended and will betray and hate one another. The many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. But lawlessness will abound. The love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be what? Saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to the nations, and then the end will come. In other words, the message of escape will be available to every single one. So that's what God is doing right now. He's infiltrating his message of escape in every area of the globe, everywhere. In Proverbs 3. Next move. You know, when you know the next move, you can already say your move. Because you already know what your move is going to be. Amen? Because you know their next move. Hallelujah. Let's speak at verse 1. My son, do not forget my word or my law. But let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Let me tell you something. You've got to trust all the way through now. Everything that's going on, you just got to trust God. Trust the plan. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Hello. It's a simple thing of acknowledging him. Do not be wise in your own eyes. For the Lord, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the fruitful first fruits of your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine my son do not despise the chastening of the lord nor detest his correction for whom the lord loves he what he corrects just as a father a son in whom he delights happy is a man who finds that wisdom let me tell you and a man who gains understanding for her proceeds are better than profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. All things you may desire cannot compare with her. Compare with who? Wisdom. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are what? Ways of pleasantness. Yes. And all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Powerful. First John chapter 4. So you're going to need wisdom, right? And you're going to need understanding. You know, it's amazing in how much is released to an individual in the presence of God. See, there are things that are released to you in the presence of God that you don't even know. It bypasses you. It bypasses the carnal part. You are impressed by the Spirit of God into your spirit. And the Holy Spirit is there who says, okay, I will bring it up now. I will bring it up now. There are things that you receive today in the presence of God that you don't even know. But it will come. Hello. That's why the analytical mind has a hard time with all this. Because it's still carnal. Again, this is not a place where we're reaching where we, we got to know everything. You don't have to know everything. You just got to know what God's telling you. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to be a busybody and know everything. Hello. Hello. Get off of the flesh book, you'll be okay. But it's an area where you want to know what God wants you to know. 
And he always wants you to know the next move of the enemy for a trap. Amen? And he wants you to know his next move so you can get in position. That's what it's about. And that's not going to happen without in relationship and fellowship. There's got to be a communication with the Holy Spirit. Amen? He's the comforter. He's your teacher. He's the one that guides you. He's going to guide you to all truth. That's why he's called the Spirit of Truth. Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits whether they are of God. Hallelujah. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are still of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. They react as the world. They think as the world. Hello? And the world hears them. We are of God. We know God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of Air. Your enemies, know your enemies, and trust the plan of God. The word says something very powerful. All things work to the good. To those who love him, which means you obey him, and according to those who are called. In 1 John chapter 2, we'll close here. Next move. You're supposed to be in season and out, right? See, this way the enemy can't sideswipe you. First John chapter 2, verse 26. Jesus, <clears throat> these things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. Deceive you. That's also called manipulate you. But the anointing, these things I have written to you because of this reason, so that you are not deceived, but the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all truth and is true in all things and not, of, and not what? And not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will what? Abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him as his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Again, it goes back to the anointing. Amen. Everything's involved in the, everything's in the anointing. Well, what? He tells you things to come. We should know the next move. We're to be ready in season and out. That's why when you, that the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And all things will be added to you. So if you're in prayer and you're praying about a circumstance or whatever, even before you go places, you should always bind a strong man before you go. Amen. Why? What are you doing? You're putting things in place. And now you're more alert. You're ready for anything because you're going to know. Look at the enemy's always setting the trap for you. The word says every day they set traps for you. Every day. Every day. No matter where you go, no matter where you are, what's going on, the enemy is going to try and set a trap for you. Don't go there. Amen? Don't get sucked in the ring. And don't try and battle him with your head. You'll lose. Amen. You should know the next move. The simplest thing to do is shut up. Just shut up. Why? 
So you can allow the Holy Spirit to release to you the vision of the next move. Has everybody got it? And where does that vision come? In a cleansed imagination. Is everybody okay? It's vital right now. Vital. Because the enemy's coming in all sorts of ways. See it through. Hear it through. Amen. And shut up. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a time to release. That's attack. But don't attack in the flesh because you're just going to reap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we give you all glory and honor and praise. We thank you, Lord. And we so desire to want to hear, see, and receive the information guided by the Spirit of your presence so that we will know the next move of our enemy and participate in the next move from you, Father. We give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Hallelujah.